Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Deva Param Brahma, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Chinmayam Yapiat Sarvam, Trilokyam Sacharacharam, Atpadam darshitam yena, dasmai shri gurave namaha. Pameva mata chapita, pameva, pameva bandhus chasakha, pameva. Vameva Vedya Dravinam Vameva Vameva Sarvam Vama Deva Deva Vameva Sarvam Vama Deva Deva Jai Guru Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Matra Rupena Sanstita Namastasyai 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 Namo Namaha Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Shakti Rupena Sanstita Namastasyai 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 Namo Namaha Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Buddhi Rupena Sanstika Namastasyai 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 Namo Namaha Ya Devi Sarva Bhuteshu Lakshmi Rupena Sanstita Namastasyai 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 Namo Namaha So we are continuing our journey through the 18th chapter. What is bondage? What is liberation? What is realization? Uh, Puneet, can I ask you to poke that white thing for me? Okay. And I'm going to ask Puneet to chant this evening just to make sure the connection is, is um, good and so that uh, Ganesh can uh, watch the possibility for bombers tonight so uh what verse are we on i believe 88 page 328 88 page 328 do you have enough light yes patra mohyanti bahava tartika pandita api swatmanam anudahritya Bahir Drishtya Sthitatehe. In this manner, many, even dialecticians and scholars, are deluded on account of their remaining in the state of external perception without having meditated deeply on their own self. So, what is it that we need to do through the scripture? Through the teaching of the Guru, we get paroksha jnana, 
indirect knowledge, sometimes when we're in the presence of the teacher, as we're what I call working the knowledge, the teacher turns our mind over and over again back upon the self. We get those moments where, ah, oh, I get it. I am the coming. But then on your way to the car, it's gone. So we have to come to it ourselves. Abhyasa and Vaira, our own practice. Renunciation, renunciation, renunciation. Not giving up all the things in the world because the world isn't the problem. It's my attachment. So I have to stay in this viewpoint of Sakshi Bhav, keep letting go. So we have at least thinness of mind, tano manasa. So we can begin on our own to see the no thingness of the self as the ground of being. This is the difference between a pundit. And a gyan pundit has theoretical knowledge, book learning. A gyani has direct experience. All right, next verse. Guru Padishtam Shyatkinchet. Sadvapya sadapirata Anudahitipchat manam Yavanna Yavalokaye Tavanna Palama Nuti Parokshat Mata Yashutu Sute Ato Mayoktam Ramam Dwam Sampashyami Sadrishrisha Whatever is taught by the Guru, being, non-being, or any other, as long as one does not perceive directly, not having meditated deeply on the self, so long he does not obtain the fruit by reason of the indirect nature of the hearing from the teacher's mouth. Rama, therefore, you see what has been declared by me in your own self with firm internalized perception. So we need to verify the teaching of the Guru and the scriptures, a laboratory of our own experience. And again, you've heard me use this example many times. If you're at a swim party and uh, people are splashing around in the pool, and let's say one of the gals, one of her bangles comes off and falls down at the bottom of the pool. How do you find it? Well, if people are in the pool splashing around, you cannot see to the bottom of the pool. So someone says, everybody out of the pool or very still. And then the surface of the water calms down and someone could say, there it is. It's down there by the four foot mark. Somebody dive in and get it. So that's essentially what we do with meditation. Meditation, we reduce the frequency and the volume of thought until we can begin to see a thought arise out of silence, exist, and then disappear back into silence. Initially, it's in the space between the thoughts. With the attention introverted, so I notice it. 
It's not that I have an experience of the self. It's not like I'm in meditation. Oh, there it is. I saw it go by. I saw the self. No. It's my very nature. In fact, I'm experiencing it all the time. But in the subtle intellect, I'm confused. Superimpose upon the self the qualities of the not self. So I remove everything that's removable. And what remains is what's always been there. Me. It's myself. So when people come to me and say, oh, Jim, I had an experience of the self 20 years ago, but alas, I lost it. Then whatever they had, it wasn't it. Once you see it, once you get it, what you see is you're never without it. When are you ever not you? Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Chittirya Parama Devi Sarva Samanya Rupini Saprakashamayi Yasmat Jadavya Vritta Rupini. That Supreme Goddess, who is consciousness, having a form which is whole or universal, is full of light since she has a nature distinct from inert objects. So, in our perception, there is a noumenon, a subject, and phenomena, stuff that I know, with reference to me. All phenomena, gross and subtle, is inert, jada. It is not self-evident, self-luminous, i.e. know it. My thumb doesn't know my finger. I know them both. Well, what about if my finger touches my thumb? Is it my finger knowing my thumb? No. That's a sensation that I know. One feeling doesn't know another feeling. Joy does it, no sorrow. I know them both. One thought does it, no another thought. I learn them both. And someone says to me, oh, Jim, I got so identified today. My ego was just rattling like crazy. And I say to them, pay attention. Did you not know the phenomenon of identification in your mind? Yes. That ego sense is jada. It's an object of cognition. You are the knower of it. Oh, Jim, I got so triggered today. and I was so groovy. I was able to drop it. And really, I got it, you know, I, I am that witness. Neat. Did that create yourself? Did you become the self? No. Your stupid ideals fell away. What is the eternal factor? Here, the metaphor is light. And with reference to me, everything else is non-luminous. It does not illumine itself. It doesn't know itself. There's always me. Aha. Any thoughts or questions on this? Next one. Atta Swatmani Vishranti 
ಪಹಂತಾ ಪರೂಪಿಣಿ ಜಡಾಶ್ಚಿದಾತ್ಮ ವಿಶ್ರಾಂತ ಚಿದಾತ್ಮನಿ ವಿಭಾಸತ therefore i consciousness in its highest nature which is resting in one's own self is a real form inert objects are reposed in the self that is consciousness and not in their own self due to their appearance only in the self that is consciousness yes so nothing in the world is knowable without a knower nothing in the world is self evident except yourself you know yourself differently than every other object are you you yeah who knows it i do what's the means of knowledge just me what is that which is known me but not like an object if you are not unknown fact you are always evident everything in the world that can be known must have a knower to know it any thoughts on this next one na swarupe svato bhanti tasman swatma avrishramah chete stu kevalam swarsmin nayan yo pakshaya sada bhasamanat vata swan swasmin ವಿಶ್ರಾಂತಿ ಪದ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಾಹಂತಾಪರಾಸೇಯಂಜಡೇಶೂನಿಡ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯೂನಾಟ್ಶೈನ್ಸ್ಲ್
which I know as I, Aham, and the ground of being of the whole creation, Brahman. They are the same thing. Any thoughts on this? Next one. Vyavritti sparshahan, Vyavritti sparsha, he neam, Paricheda, Vivarjanat, Sarva mansiam, Yata sansam, Padashe nagaram, Yatha. This Purnahanta, or full eye consciousness, is destitute of contact with any differentiation on account of abandoning division, since everything is abiding in it as a city reflected in a mirror. So, just as space is not really divided, even though there's glass space, bold space, etc. They are in space, but the space is just still. It's the ultimate containment. So also, the multiplicitous world appears in consciousness. But consciousness itself is not divided up. Listen very carefully. Visishtadvaita teaches that you are the drop and God is the ocean. My jiva is a little bit of God. There's God within me. There's a place within me, the individual, where God and me are one. That is not the realization of a Dvaita. Brahman is not divisible. Your experience of I is not a part of Brahman. So Brahman has no dimension. It fools us. How can little old me be the totality of God? Well, not your ego. But that ground of being, that space of consciousness, well, how big is it? It has no dimension. It's outside of time and space, actually. Yet it's eminent, it's totally here, in and through everything. Your experience of I is totality of Brahman. That's why we have these words like Kevala or Kaivalya, alone. There's only one here. Best way I've been able to explain that is imagine that I have a piece of butcher paper and there's a half a dozen pinholes in it. The room is dark and you see six lights. Question is, are there six pen lights or is there one flashlight? If you're on the other side of the paper, you can't tell. But you have to imagine that these pinholes are sentient beings. So this one says, oh, I know that the source of me is light. What about you? Oh, mine is light too. Well, is your light different than my light? No, 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 no. I have found that the self in me is a flashlight. Ooh, me too. There are not six little lights. One light. Six jars of water. It's at night, you look in the jars and you see six reflected mirrors. But does each jar have 
one of six moons in the sky? No, one moon illuminating all six dragons. So Puneet is sitting over there and you in Zoomland, you see the world from your viewpoint. I see it from my viewpoint. You are aware of your body. I'm aware of my body. You're aware of your thoughts and feelings. I'm aware of my thoughts and feelings. But when you look behind your eyes and you notice the knower, there's nothing there. Yet that no thingness shines as pure awareness. When I look behind my eyes, I have the same experience. The self in me is not like the self in you. The self in me is the self. Next one. Vyavrittirva parichedha katham kena hi sambhavet evam purna swarupaya purnam yat skuranam sthitam tadeva swatma vishranti purnahanta chakathyate akhandai karak sam yeta detavad rama vaibhavet how and by which indeed can differentiation or division happen the full manifestation of consciousness having a nature that is whole existing in this manner is alone called repose in itself or full eye consciousness rama this is one unbroken essence and can be so much alone so my favorite definition of maya it's the word we use to describe how the impossible seems possible. How is it that consciousness, vijnana dhanam, a homogeneous mass of sentience, stita, absolutely still. Achalam, it never moves at all. Nirupaham, without any form. Nirmalam, without the slightest taint or dirt. Seeing to have arise within it an entire universe. The very substratum of it, yet itself is never touched by it. Now, prove this in the laboratory of your own experience. As you go through your day, keep checking out yourself. See if you ever become anything. See if anything ever gets to you, touches you. Sigh and still breath. All of this appears like Pratibimba, images in a mirror. The surface of the mirror is never touched. And they're not really there. Seen, but not real. Next one. <laughs> 
निरूपणे बहुविधम निरूपणे बहुविधम इव तत्प्रतिभासते एतावदेव स्वतंत्र यम यत् शक्तिहिर तन्मयी in investigation that appears as of many kinds so much alone is its freedom of will in consequence of which the power of appearing variously consists of that consciousness alone so by its swatantra its own power of will its power of manifesting within it all this So we have to take these two images, like the waves in the ocean and like the city in the mirror, mush them together. Like the waves in the ocean, the waves are only the ocean itself appearing as the waves. But this metaphor falls short because in fact, the surface of the ocean actually moves like the city in the mirror the mirror never moves never changes the images appear in it but they're not really there but the images in the mirror are dependent on an external object to make them so you mush them together frankly i think it's easier to simply look at the dream state by one unified mind appears as the dream body with the dream ego the dream world and the interior of the dream thoughts and feelings all that multiplicity in the dream seen and upon awakening gone this is no how to talk with someone today and he said jim how do i disappear the universe very good question but the answer is to see it for what it is the question is like jim how do i get rid of the water in the mirage how big a bucket do i need to get rid of the water in the mirage the problem is not water the problem is knowledge or lack thereof as soon as i realize that it's an optical illusion it's just heat waves off the desert i have got rid of the water in the mirage how do i achieve the disappearance of the world i see it for what it is next verse Prakasha Tejaso Yatua Daushanyam Chaiva Pitakstitam Evam Swatantra Vishranti Sahite Karasatmika. As the heat and light of fire do not exist separately from fire, so consciousness associated with freedom of will and repose in its own self is of one essence. So it's the dharma of fire to burn, it's the dharma of fire to glow. So also, it is the nature of consciousness to be self-evident and to shine as pure awareness. Illuminating all the images that appear in it yet completely unattached by it, never touched by it 
Gita uses this marvelous phrase, asparsha yoga. Sparsha, prich prichiti means to touch. Asparsha means untouched. Yoga means joy. The whole universe dances because of Brahman contact. Oh, but Brahman never really contacts him. Yet Brahman doesn't perceive it as exterior. In fact, it's in consciousness. Next one. Yameva Himaya Kya Chakti Paramadurghata Adarsha Vatyasat Swarupe Chide Karasa Rupini Satyap Satyapya Neka White Chitra Abhasanena Vibhasate Tathabhasan Kalevi Swarupa the Nivartanam. This fullness or I consciousness or Purnahata alone is indeed the power called Maya, which causes the impossible to happen, and which, like a mirror, though remaining in its essential nature in the form of the one essence that is consciousness, shines with many wonderful appearances, and there is no ceasing from its essential nature, even at the time of its appearances variously. So consciousness never loses or ceases from its essential nature. Consciousness never undergoes a change. Some schools of Tantra teach spanda, vibration. Consciousness vibrates and becomes the stuff. Nipura Rahasya and the Upanishads do not. They teach, and this is of course the experience of the Mahatmas. Consciousness is Kutusta, absolutely still. world appears in it. It's Maya Shakti. It's impossible. Now, when a woman or a man attains self-realization, the world keeps going. But the woman or man of wisdom sees it very differently. No longer caught in the dream. They have the antidote to the cobra venom of ignorance. Next one. Parichela abhaso yaya. So natma pasa uchite savidya jadashakti sa chunyam prakriti revacha atyanta bhava akasha tama prathama sargakaha sarvam tadeva samproktam parichedan. That which is the appearance of division or limitation is called the appearance of non-self. That is ignorance and inert energy and that is void and also prakriti or nature. That is absolute non-existence, space, darkness and first creation. 
the first division caused by Maya alone is described as all that. So these are the various names by which the phenomenon of manifestation go by. Prakriti, nature, Shakti, etc. But all the forms are inherently jada, not luminous in and of themselves. Only consciousness has this precaution, this light awareness. Next one. Rama ya paripurnatma vishramo vai samastitaha. Tasyaika deshatam bhanti kritama kashas bhasanam. Rama, the appearance of space is caused by the delusion of a partial nature, that is, state of occupying one place for that repose which is abiding as the fullness of the self. So the, the point that he's getting at here is that space itself is a mental construct. I mean, one of the things as a non-scientist that I just have such a hard time wrapping my head around, that before the Big Bang, there was no time and space. It was a singularity, I think they call it. And then it banged. And then there was an inflation. And then time and space like a balloon blowing up. Baffles me. But what I can share with you, which is our own direct experience, if you close your eyes, imagine you're lying in a coffin and it's dark and the walls are right against you, the lids right above now get rid of that image and imagine you're in a room. Imagine you're in my living room, sitting on the couch or one of the chairs. Now imagine that you're up in your woods, walking in the woods. Now imagine you're way up in the Himalayas and you're looking down on, say, the Kulu Valley, you're way up at maybe 10, 15,000 feet, you're looking down, enormous space. And then you look up at the heavens, the Milky Way and all the stars. Now open your eyes. Did you not create space with your mind? It was imaginary though, Jim, that's not real. Ah, neither is this. But it comes about in the same way. Both time and space occur in the mind. Next one. Esha eva bhaved bheda pashudrishte ka gocharaha rama sukshma drisha pashya this space alone would be the difference accessible to the perception of ignorant ones. 
Brahma, see with subtle perception. That space which is seen by you is alone the consciousness that is the self of the multitude of creatures existing there. Note, space which is without limitation and is whole resembles the self accepting that it is not endowed with consciousness. But for the wise ones having subtle perception, since nothing exists apart from pure consciousness, the so-called inert space is not different from the, from the self that is consciousness. Yes. So just as you can create great spaces in your imagination, and the space in your imagination is not separate from you, this is no different. It is imbued with, pervaded by sentience. I love questions like, oh, Jim, do you think the earth is sentient? Well, you've got it upside down. Of course it is, because the earth exists in consciousness. It's pervaded by consciousness. Of course it's sentient. Now, what its mind is like, God only knows. I mean, I, that's way beyond my understanding. But it is sentient because in the end, everything exists in Hey, Liz, Jim. Yeah, I can't see him. Could you get in touch with him? I called him, but he's not picking up. I'll try okay. once more. Okay. Yeah, I think he put his phone on uh, silent or something. Yeah, I was not able to get in, get in touch with him. I think I think, I think he might be back. Yeah.
Goodbye. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yeah. What was the last thing I said? Who knows? Go on to the next verse. Sorry. <laughs> Yatan ya dehe shvakasho bhasate ya sadatava saeva te shama syachitananda katatmaka. As that space which shines in the bodies of others alone would be their self of the nature of a mass of consciousness, bliss, so is it for you always. So the self in me is the self in all. Now, it seems like consciousness is inside me. And that's uh, an, a, an illusion. It has to do with the fact that I peep out through the senses. It seems like I'm inside. And in fact, in Gita, Krishna says, all this is strung on me like gems on a thread, money sutra. But then later on, he says, well, actually, I am not in them, they are in me. And he goes on to say, well, actually, they're not even really in me. Behold my divine Maya, the support of it all. Let's see if we can understand. So if I had two glasses, the space inside this glass is just like the space in another glass. The self in me is like the self in me. But is the space in the glass different than the room space. In fact, is there just space in the glass or is the glass actually in space? And when I move the glass, is space moving? No. So also these various people, dogs and frogs, all of them seem to have a self inside, but actually they were moving in the medium of consciousness. This inert thing called a body, mind, intellect, they're just moving around in the universal medium of consciousness. Let's see if I can think of a world with a metaphor. Okay, so my phone is hooked up to, I don't know, what's the phone hooked up to? Whatever the, the cell tower is, is mm -hmm. the network, phone network. Yeah. And you have a phone that's hooked up to the network. So is the network inside the phone or is the phone in the medium of the cell tower energy? What, what, what are they actually putting out? Microwaves? Like, like yeah, no, some waves. But they're, they're all around. They're in a medium. So the iPad goes on, it, it works. It tunes into the network. A cell phone turns into the network. His phone tunes into the network. It's not in the phone. The phone is in the medium. So the Vijnana Dhanam, the universal medium of one still homogenized consciousness pervades all of space. And all the beings are just moving around in it inert without it. It's what illumines and enlivens 
everything. You're going to have to help me work on this this metaphor because I don't understand it. Sure. You know, explain it all to me. Does it sound like a good one to use? Yeah. Okay. All right, next verse. Evam Swakat, Evam Swakalpita Kasha Krastam Yachit Swaku Stitam Tadeva Mana It Yukta Atma Eva Nahi Chetara. That natural state of consciousness, which is seized or pervaded by the space fashioned by oneself, in this manner is alone called mind. It is only the self, surely not another. So consciousness has within it all sorts of forms. But one of the forms that it takes is in the human intellect. It illumines consciousness, illumines this thing called a mind, which then has my individual perception of a universe in it. Because the world that I know of name and form is limited. I can't see what's happening in Uday's house. If the self is omnipresent, why can't I know all that? Because this human mind is one of the Jada inner forms. It appears to have limited capacity to know name and form. But itself is inert. And this thing called a mind is simply awareness of stuff. The other image I like to do is if you take your hands and you make a tube out of them, you occlude your peripheral vision, but your eye, EYE, has not been affected. If you remove your hands, nothing's happened to your eye, your EYE. I've just removed the limiting adjunct. So also, when awareness is peeping through the body, mind, intellect, what it perceives is a world of name and form, sensations, feelings, thoughts. Remove the limiting adjunct. How do I do that? It's very simple. Stop the mind. And you stop the world. And individuality falls. Gone. Just like your eye, EYE, was never touched or affected by the two you were looking through. So also the self is never limited by the adjuncts through which it peeps. Am I still online? Yes. Okay. Yep. Someone just texted and I wanted to make sure that I hadn't been bounced again. Next verse. Tatra varana mukhyatva pramanam mana uchate avritta pradhanyastu pramata jiva uchate there, on account of the prominence of the covering of consciousness, it is called the measure or the instrument of knowledge that is the mind. On account of the prominence of the covered entity, which is consciousness, it is called the measurer or the knower that is the jiva or the individual soul. So what happens because of avritti is the word this, he's using here, spiritual ignorance veiling power in the mind i do not know that i am brahma then the mind projects this 
false self, this counterfeit self, this chit chaya, this shadow of consciousness. I think I'm a person. Now listen very carefully. Actually, I never lose the direct experience of the self. Meet a homeless person outside. How are you doing today? Oh, terrible. Oh, terrible. What's your life like? Oh, miserable. By the way, do you exist? Oh, yes. What's your existence like? My existence is terrible, but you know you exist. Of course I know I exist. What are you aware of? My misery, you idiot. Give me some money. The person is thundering the Vedantic truth. I am. I know. But because of this avritti, this ignorance, that person attributes to the self the qualities of the jada, inert, not self. Cold, I'm hungry, I'm poor, I'm sick, I'm homeless. Which in fact are conditions of the body, mind, intellect, not of the self. Is that clear? You do not gain an experience of the self. You do not get anything new. You realize what you've always been. All right, next verse. Evam Akasha Vritopi Chidatma Bhuya Evatu Akashe Koma Plintyanta Chitile Nirgat Nemale Kathin Naksh Lashtri Dhan Tama Linyanam Praka Palpane Utanya Bhasya Dehatma Thus, the self that is consciousness, though covered or concealed by space, manifesting the elements in the space, which is delicate, extremely loose, rarefied, and stainless, by fashioning hardness, adherence, denseness, and impurity, again, becomes covered also by a body. As the light of a lamp in the interior of a pot shines, pervading the interior, so the self in the body also illumines the body. So, if you take a lamp, a lantern, shall we say, and you set it inside a large uh, kumba pot, and you put the lid on, nothing shines out, but the lamp is illuminating the interior of the pot. It's still there. So, in a very dense mind, I'm illuminating body sensations, I'm illuminating feelings, I'm illuminating thoughts. It's like the inside of the pot. Now, if I take the pot and I bang with a, a, a chisel five holes in it. When I look at the pot, I see five lights. So we are a pot, a goomba, with five holes in it. One, two, three, four, oh, no, seven, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. Eight, nine. Nine holes in it. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin. You get the idea. 
All these are are holes in the pot so that I can loom various things. Now let's go back to our image of the pot. Hearing, tasting, telling, smudging, you know, the five senses. And let's put some colored cellophane paper over each one of these holes. So here the light is green, there the light is red, here the light is yellow, here the light is blue. Oh, all those perceptions are different. So also, hearing seems different than seeing, which seems different than tasting, which seems different than touching and smelling. But the light inside the pot is one. So also, the awareness that peeps through the various sensory holes is one. Next verse. Evam Mesha Shari Rantar Abhasana Matrakaha Haste Gurdha Pradip Atma Tadantar Matra Bhasanaha. Thus, this self is of the nature of the mere light of consciousness within the body and exists with the nature of a concealed lamp within a pot, shining only within its interior. So the self in me seems like it's limited. I only know my own little world. But that's because it's like the light is inside the pot. And actually light is everything. It's not really limited. Okay, one more and then we'll quit. Deepa Prabha Ghatash Chad Deepa Prabha Ghatash Chidra Adhyatha Niryati Vaibahi Evam Maksha Dwara Mukha Bhuyo Niryati Vaichiti. As the light of the lamp goes outside through the hole on the pot, so consciousness indeed goes out through the openings of the gates of the senses frequently to illuminate the external objects. So he stole my image. So the holes in the pot, let the light go out to illumine the outside, so also the light of awareness functioning through the senses, illumines a phenomenal world, seeing, tasting, touching, smelling. Seeing. I can't remember the five senses. Okay. It's nine o'clock now. How many more verses? We still have a lot more? Yeah, about like 40 more. Okay. Long, long chapter. All right, any questions before we wrap up tonight? Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamabhaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti Shanti, Shanti, Hari Om, Sri Guru Yoda Maha, Hari Om. Thank you all. Sorry about the technical difficulties.